I think that everything in my life has happened to get me to the next spot. This is just one of those things. The, the fact that I should be ashamed about being a victim is ridiculous, but that's how, that's how it feels. My first husband died when I was 27, and so I thought, now I have space to reinvent myself and to do what I wanted to do. I went on to get a master's degree at New Mexico State, and that's where I met Val. Val's main form of violence in our relationship was possession and control. But possession and control feel like love and affection at the beginning. When they're small, it's hard to see them. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. He would yell at me for hours a day. I would go to sleep and he would yell at me and I would wake up and he would yell at me. There were all sorts of threats all the time that weigh on you, that you, you can't live with. Nobody can live like that. He would have hurt my kids. It hurt me and not my kids, you know? So how am I gonna leave him and survive? I didn't know. I couldn't figure it out. I walked in the house and I noticed that the gate to go downstairs was askew. I walk over and I see my bedroom lights on and I was like, I didn't leave my bedroom light on. He was there, like he was there. He had all my clothes in a pile. He was there waiting for me. I turned around and he had a gun in my face. I was like, run. And I ran. And he had walked into the kitchen to get a meat cleaver. He broke my nose and he knocked out two teeth, but he didn't kill me. He walked away and I ran again. I got the door open this time and he shot me in both legs. So we get downstairs and he kept me in the basement for four hours, variously torturing me. Gun to my head, gun to my head, gun to my head. Gun. He'd walk over and every single time he'd walk toward me, I was like, this is it. This is the point where I die. And then he'd put the gun to my head and I would negotiate and I would fight. He did not pull the trigger. I'm just sitting there thinking, Jenny Andrus, you know how to survive this. You will not die today. And I did not. Yeah, the woman was one of two who were shot during a very tense and horrific hostage situation that occurred. This is uh, one of the worst scenarios that, that you could imagine having to deal with where there's a hostage in a home. After hours of negotiation, police say officers had no choice but to storm the house. I just got on my hands and knees and counted to 60 over and over and over. And I got to about two and a half minutes and I heard SWAT come in and I turned my head right as down fire. He shot me in the, in the head one or two times, in the arm two or three times. As a family, we're now happy, actually happy, and not always negotiating and scrapping. What are you doing, Clutchy? There's not this pallor over the whole house of darkness and fear and anxiety. And so our lives are amazing. We need to naturalize talk about domestic violence. So women who are victims don't talk about it because it's shameful and scary and nobody's going to understand and nobody else goes through it because nobody else is talking about it. Women's bodies, children's bodies are not safe, are not treated as important. We need to shift the story so that women's bodies, children's bodies are valued, um, are cared for in ways that stop violence. People matter a lot to me, so my relationships matter a lot to me, and I think I matter a lot to the people around me, and they're always there for me. They've always been there for me.